OK, good evening, members, to this meeting of the Social Services Scrutiny Committee being held via Microsoft Teams on Tuesday, the 27th of April at 5.30 p.m. OK, just to remind all members that this meeting will be recorded and made available to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving any confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images or audios of those individuals speaking will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council's website at www.cafili.gov.uk. And a very warm welcome to everybody, including the members of the social services team, Gareth, Joe and Dave, and to all of you as individual members and to our guests this evening and from Care Inspectorate to Wales. I'd just like to say this will be my last uh, social services scrutiny meeting as your chair, as you will all be aware that by this coming weekend I will be standing down as a councillor. OK, so if we move on with the agenda, first of all, Agenda item number one, to receive apologies for absence. Yeah, Chair, we have apologies from Councillor Carl Thomas, and I think we've probably got apologies from Councillor Carmen Bazina as well. OK, thank you very much. OK, agenda item number two, declarations of interest. Councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interests in respect of any item of business on its agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Are there any declarations of interest? No. OK, and just before I go on, just to remind members, if you should have any connectivity issues, the meeting will continue as long as we are correct. Please do attempt to rejoin and I would ask all members to keep their camera on and use the hands up facility by keeping their mute mic until they're called in to contribute to a subject. OK. OK. So then we're moving on to approve and sign the following minutes. Agenda item number three, Social Services Scrutiny Committee held on the 16th of March, 2021. Big pages one to four. OK, so check in for accuracy. Page one. Page two. Page three. And page four. Can I have somebody move to move chair. those, please? Yeah, move chair. Seconded. And I seconded. Can I have uh, all those in favour? A voting thing will come up at the moment, and then I'll take those that with the verbal vote in a moment. Chair Councillor Bevan was not the last meeting, so he doesn't need to vote on it. We can okay. abstain. Councillor Bevan, do you want to abstain on all this? OK, I think uh, everybody's voted now. Councillor Skivens, how would you like to vote in regards to this item? Yeah, I'm for that. OK, okay thank, thank you. you. And, uh, uh, Councillor Bevan, if you want to press your unmute, you're muted at the moment. OK. Give us a nod if you'd like to abstain. OK. We'll take that as a non-vote on that one, Kath. OK, thank you. OK, moving on then to agenda item number four, consideration of any matter referred to this committee in accordance with the call-in procedure. Kath? Uh, none, Chair. OK, thank you very much. OK, agenda item number five, Social Services Scrutiny Committee Forward Work Programme, big pages five to 14. Over to you, Kath. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to remind members, the next meeting of the Social Services Scrutiny Committee will be on the 15th of June. Uh, there's one main item on the agenda, the Regional Partnership Update uh, for June 2021. Uh, there will also be a couple of separate information items on the budget and grant funding that will be sent out to you. And the meeting after that will be the 2nd of September uh, 2021. And that's when we'll have the Directorate Performance Report for year-end 2021 and the annual report from the director and the um, 
the budget period three report for 21-22 and the rest of the items are all listed on page nine too. OK, thank you very much. Any questions for Catherine in relation to the attached forward work programme? Please indicate by hands up. No, OK, there's no nothing in that. Uh, do we go to a vote on that one, Kath? Yes, no, just, just a hands okay. up if you want to do that. OK, Everybody then can I have a move and a seconder, please? I move to it. Thank you, Councillor. happy to second. Yeah. OK, and we got several seconders. That's great. So if we can fetch up the vote. OK, I think that's enough time. Councillor Skivens, would you like to vote in regards to this? Yeah, for that. OK, thank you very much. Councillor John Bevan. OK, I take I take that nod as a vote for. That's unanimous, Chair. OK, thank you very much for that. OK, moving on, members. Uh, six, to receive and consider the following cabinet reports. I don't believe any reports have been called in, so we'll move quickly on to agenda item number seven. To receive and consider the following scrutiny reports. Seven. Ken Spectrate, Wales, Assurance Check 2021, Kifili County Borough Council, Social Services Feedback. I'll hand over to Shane to introduce the report. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Apologies, I'm going to keep my camera off because it's playing up. Okay, <laughs> and I think if I no turn problem. it on, I might leave you. So I'm not going <laughs> to gamble that. But first of all, I just want to thank you for your hard work as Chair of this committee and for your support with your helpful chats when I started. Um, you know, good luck in the future and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Shane. Much appreciated. So I'll move on to the report. In March 2021, Care Inspector at Wales undertook an assurance check on the Directorate. The purpose of this assurance check was to review how Caffili's Social Services Directorate continues to help and support adults and children with a focus on safety and wellbeing. Attached to tonight's work report is the letter from CIW detailing the findings of their review, and I'm pleased to say we have Anne Rawling from CIW with us this evening who will present her findings and answer any questions members may have. But before I pass you on to Anne, I want to put on record my thanks to Dave, Joe and Gareth and all the staff in social services for their hard work and commitment in supporting adults and children's safety and wellbeing, which is clearly evident from this CIW review. Thank you, Chair. Thank you there, Cabinet Member. Uh, Councillor Bevan, are you trying to get my attention? No. OK, all right, I now move on then to Anne to take us through the report. OK, thank you very much. Um, as Shane adhered to, um, we undertook a quality assurance check, which is a proportionate inspection given the current 12 months that we've had with the pandemic. And we undertook it on both adults and children services on the 15th and the, to the, the week of the 15th to the 19th of March. And the key areas that we looked at was, you know, was the local authority discharging its strategy functions in keep, keeping people safe and, you know, keeping carers who need support and promoting the well-being during the pandemic? And then there was a specific area that we looked at as well within children's services was around children coming into care, children returning from home to their families, if it was quick and safe enough to do so. And undertaking this quality assurance check, we reviewed remotely files um, with adults and children's services, and those files um, we tracked five in adults and five in children in detail where we spoke with the social workers concerned and where possible with the families, carers, young people, foster carers. And then there was another lot of files that we looked at, but we <coughs> people. We spoke with um, a selection of staff members in both adults and services from social workers right the way up to senior managers 
We also spoke with um, partner agencies, um, police, health, education, and third sector and voluntary sector. Um, importantly, we spoke with young people who had left the care system and young carers and anybody else who, who wanted to speak with us. We also undertook surveys and the council undertook surveys on our behalf. The areas that we looked at, um, we looked at people and within that it was how the council engaged with people. You know, it, I, I'm not going to go in detail reading through the report because it's available for you. But what we found was was really good evidence of, of both operational communication and actually business going on almost as normal after the first couple of months of the pandemic. People we spoke with had told us that the local authority had maintained, maintained safe contact with them. You know, where there was a need, there was direct face to face contact. Other than that, you know, people were telling us how they were contacted through virtually through teams or through email or through just having a phone call. But you know, they were really positive in both adults and children about how the local authority were keeping them, you know, abreast of what was going on right the way through. You know, Straight away, you know, we found that carers were recognised about the additional pressures that were put on them and, you know, the work that was done to ensure that carers, you know, their additional welfare was put in place and where possible services were continued. You know, we found looking at files at people's views, their choices were respected and we could see the voice of the of the person in both adults and children. You know, we're very much aware that the recruitment of staff has been recognised as business critical, you know, especially in children's services, but there's a very proactive grow your own. Um, and where workers have been taken on that are newly qualified during this period, or new workers who have just come into the service, they've been well supported with them saying that managers were both, you know, accessible and supportive. Workloads are described as busy and demanding, but manageable. Are we very much aware that, you know, there's been a, a rise in the complexity of the cases coming through the door? The one thing, you know, that we do see in both adults and children's is that there's a very, very good quality assurance systems, you know, which captures and disseminates learning. So that's really positive. And we saw this, you know, right the way through the files. And how that was being looked at to develop services for the future. You know, support <coughs> looked after children is a main priority. We've seen the work over the last 12, 18 months that the council has been doing, especially children's services around stabilising, you know, the uh, looked after population, bringing young people back home and building up their own provision of, of placements through not only developing the residential provisions, but also by continuing to recruit foster carers. And there's been some really, really positive work um, around how you've managed to recruit foster carers. And what was particularly pleasing was the new foster carers saying to us how they found Caffili being one of the most supportive um, local authorities in, in recognising the needs of foster carers. With prevention, we found a real positive approach to the culture of prevention right the way through both adults and children. And this really shows, you know, the work with partner agencies in third sector. There's very, very well established front door arrangements. 
and you know within adult services the the comments that we received about the integrated community resource team and the occupational therapist was was second to none you know everybody we spoke to was saying about you know how this team along with a lot of other people within adult services <coughs> went above and beyond you know during these difficult times within children's services similarly you know the missed project safer families you know is really coming into its own the work that's been done and you know this has been backed up by how the assistant director of children's services really knows what's going on you know through attending the resource and the complex needs panel you know you know your young people the support of the corporate parenting really comes through and we could see how you know work was being done within this area partnerships you know what they said was if there's any positive to be coming out of this pandemic has been the way in which a number of partnerships especially health um have worked together you know there's been plans that, were, that have been tried to put in place for a long time have now come through and the work that Kafili contributes on a Gwent wide can't be underestimated. You know, the regional partnership board, you know, despite a pause in its activities in the initial stages of the pandemic, is continued to influence and share care services within the local authority. And Kafili is a major player in that. The police spoke to us about, you know, the new safeguarding hubs that went live. Um, you know, education spoke to us about the work that has been done, you know, jointly during the pandemic around ensuring pe young people, you know, were, were had access to education, whether that be in the hubs or whether it be through, you know, receiving laptops or work being sent home. You know, there was major contribution, you know, to ensure then that, you know, especially vulnerable children were looked after. You know, providers said that they, they felt valued, you know, the domiciliary care providers were telling us around the work that's been done, you know, how they've been supported by the local authority, you know, not only by having staff help out when needed, but by also with the help of the navigation to all the guidance and documents that have come through from Welsh Government, and they really appreciated that. You know, um, so there was there was a real positive feel around partnership working and 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 a real appetite of moving on in the future. And then finally, we asked about, you know, well-being and we found that, you know, in both adults and services, you know, people in Caffili are being kept safe. You know, we have in adult services, we identified good risk analysis, decision making, plans in place, how the safeguarding team worked, really good awareness around the Mental Health Capacity Act. You know, there's fantastic management oversight and the training that, you know, the staff have been undertaking is really being put into practice. Within children's services, it was similar, you know, a real emphasis on safeguarding. I think the only area for us where it isn't a concern, the authority had identified it itself is the newly qualified workers and how you know they need to be supported and brought through um and what we found with 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 those in their files was is that they could tell us everything but they hadn't developed the confidence to actually put it in in a lot of the the reports but that's something that the council are aware of and it will grow in the future 
So, you know, for me, it, 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 I was able to evidence where I'd placed Kefili within our almost like risk, risk matrix that it is not a local authority at risk. You know, it is well worthy of just having an assurance check at this time because of the stability, the clear management oversight. And, you know, the mostly, apart, you know, apart from some areas of children's services, the stability of staff. So, you know, for me, it was, it was, it was very positive that I was able to, A, be able to produce a report like that. But when I gave the feedback back to the director and the two assistant directors, there wasn't any surprises because through the year, you know, I am constantly kept informed of anything that is, you know, that I need to know about. You know, there is open channels of communication. So, you know, I can only I can only thank you, Philly, for that. Jim. OK, thank you very much uh, for that, Anne. Uh, I take a, a couple of things away from that. Uh, if I can, before we open up for questions, uh, most definitely it's a overall very positive report. And I believe it needs to be said for the record. Uh, our thanks as a committee to yourself and to social services in particular, Joe, Gareth, their teams and to Dave for a job very well done. Now, if we could only just focus on the positives, that would be great. But that's not what our role is about. Our role is about the constructive challenge as well. So before I fetch a number of others in for questions, uh, I'd like to focus upon, if I could, uh, the risk assessment element. So it's a, it's a true two pronged uh, question. And I'm, I'm going to slightly bypass Gareth on this one and go, and go to Dave as well, because Dave will recall, because there's a little bit of history around this, uh, that uh, we had issues in the past with our risk assessment model many years ago when I was first a counsellor. Uh, and we had full social services scrutiny support and overall council support in addressing those issues. And those issues were addressed in a professional manner and a timely manner. So I guess what I'm looking for is an assurance that we've not got an issue re-emerging there. And it's maybe I'm just reading something that maybe is is not there. So first of all, if I could fetch Anne in for your interpretation, Anne, and then if I could fetch Dave in, please. Yeah, no, it may be the interpretation. I mean, Kefili, I've got a very strong risk base and strength based. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the 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 training that's been undertaken, we are beginning, you know, we we seeing it right the way through. I mm -hmm. think, you know, what, what I was just trying to get over is is that in, in, in just in some cases um it wasn't as visible as in others. But we know the reasons why, and, and that was the experience of some of the newly qualified workers. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't a criticism at all, because if you look further back, you can see within safeguarding, you know, clear risk assessments. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't that at all, no. Mm -hmm. I, I, thought it, I thought it may have been something like that from somebody like myself who comes from a social work background as well. Uh, it's it comes with practice in knowing what to capture and put in there because you do so much work with individuals, you know, the, the system doesn't otherwise, you know, 75% of a social worker's time would be just recording and filling in forms. Otherwise, if they try to capture absolutely everything they're doing, not that I'm giving Dave his answer before he gives it to me. <laughs> Dave, if I could fetch, oh God, sorry, Anne. Yeah, and that's why I made it clear, you know, that both, Adults and children, you know, well, all people that, that we, we've seen within Kefili are safeguarded. There's no mm -hmm. issue around mm -hmm. that level at all. Mm -hmm. no. And the professional challenge element, Anne, you, you mentioned around the, however, the level of professional challenge provided was not consistently well recorded. Again, the same sort of thing, is it? it experience? Yeah, I mean, 
there was professional challenge, you know, <laughs> where when we spoke with the social workers, it was there. But I think it goes back down to some of the newly, you know, experienced. It's it's not actually recording it. And that's why it wasn't a concern, not a concern at all. Mm. You know, it, it will come through. You know, so and, and I think from 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 my personal uh, perspective in regards to this as well, uh, it's very pleasing to see because we we are still in the midst of a pandemic, and if anything was going to go seriously wrong in regards to safeguarding and risk assessment models, now certainly would have been the time that it had happened, and it's extremely pleasing. Yeah, and there was so, there was nothing, nothing. Brilliant, brilliant, Dave. Way. Not a lot I can add, really, Chair. Um, I, th I think, uh, you know, one of the things Anne touched on when she did her, uh, her presentation was the strong quality assurance system. Um, and that, that's fundamental that we've got that in place. And I, you know, I am going to pinch your answer to a degree, Chair, because it's a narrow walk, uh, narrow rope of staff walk. You do want them to record the right things, but equally you don't want everything recorded and files and records cluttered up uh, and then other staff coming in and not seeing the wood for the trees. Um, you will know that historically some of the, the recruitment issues we've had, particularly in children's services, you've had many reports on those and market supplements. Um, and we've, you know, we've benefited from that. We've pretty much got a, a full workforce in terms of, of numbers, but experience only comes with the passage of time. Um, and I'm heartened that people are doing it. I'm slightly frustrated that they're doing it and not recording it. Uh, but through the efforts of Gareth and Joe and their managers, we will get where we need to be. Absolutely, I have no doubt of that. Okay, thank you very much, Anne. Thank you very much for Dave. I've got uh, three questions so far. First of all, I'm going to fetch in Vince. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, and thanks, Anne, for, for your feedback and, and the report. Um, I, I, when I was reading through it, I actually saw the, the reference to um, the, the role of uh, advocacy uh, and you, the mention of that that there was uh, uh, there was evidence of informal advocacy arrangements that have been effective. I, I'm just wondering if you can comment, and perhaps uh, Dave can comment on, uh, as well, is is uh, on how the, the level of advocacy that's um, that's uh, been available during the pandemic, um, and the circumstances in which that has um, proved. Uh, very, you know, useful um, uh, uh, to to be a part of of that picture around the individual's care. We found that where formal advocacy was needed, it always. And if a young person um, requested advocacy support, NIAS were there straight away, along with um, within adult services. You know, advocacy comes in many ways. You know, we saw. Uh, within um, the mental health services, we saw best interest assessors advocating on behalf, and that's what we call the informal. Right. You know, we we saw numerous social workers informally advocating for young people, especially within fostering. You know, and 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 care leavers, they are they are you know PAs informally, you know, advocating. But where there where there was a need for for formal advocacy, we saw no delays in that at all. Well, that's, that's, okay, that's really good to hear. Yeah, thank okay, you. Great. OK, uh, Michelle from the Parents Network. Hi there, thanks. It's a really, really positive report. And I think one of my comments before the meeting started was that I wanted to hear your your conversation about the report prior to asking any any real questions about it and i i think the things that originally chair was going to ask are probably um you know dissipated now because of the um the conversation but i did have one thing i wanted to ask which might be a bit naughty but one of the Go things ahead. you mentioned was that um the third sector and the voluntary sector had been involved in it. And I just wondered which organisations, just for my own curiosity, because I do chair the voluntary sector reps um, meetings. And I just for that, I would like to sort of have a bit of an understanding of the third sector organisations, if you have it to hand. I'll, I'll try and have a quick look, Michelle. I'm, I'm sorry about this, but 
I've come in off leave for the meeting, so I may not be able to. Um, no problem. No to problem. Access. Bear, bear with me. There's no problem, man. If, if if you can't, if you could just forward that information on Hold to on. committee services via Dave, if you can't find yeah. it. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Chair, Chair, can I just come in? Maybe I can help because uh, yeah. absolutely, my, Gareth. Gareth. My recall Sorry, Gareth. Was, that it, was that it was those agencies where we were commissioning services. Yes. If, yes. So if that helps, Michelle. So it's it's the ones that have contracts with the local authority. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so sorry. It was that to, just just to jump on uh, Michelle's question. There was that uh, across both service areas, as in adults and children. Yeah, and and it was real a real focus on how we were all managing through COVID, rather than because uh, because one of the focuses of of this in this assurance check was about COVID arrangements. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much for that uh, intervention, yeah. Gareth. Michelle, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think it does. I think my my feeling is always when we we sort of generally say the third sector was consulted, it can sometimes just be a tick box. And you know, and if if I was to be asked the question by our third sector um, organize you know organizations, it would be useful for me to just have a little bit of an understanding of the of the sc scope of that consultation, if if you know what I mean. But the I scope, get where you come from. The scope, Michelle, is is that um, we we met with representatives, so there would have been a a teams discussion, but also um, we had a survey on our website. And um, where appropriate, we would have sent out the survey as well. That's great. Thank you. And would the and and sorry, and would that survey have gone only to the services we commission with, or wide more widely? It would have definitely gone to the ones that you commission with, because what we were looking at is, you know, who's been working with these people. But on our website, we always put out when we're going into um, either do a quality assurance check or a you know a more in-depth risk one if there's a need and they can anybody then can access a number of surveys on our website that we've got linked to that local authority okay thank you very much Anne. Yeah. michelle did you want to come back in or are you happy with that no no i'm happy with that but it, it it was just something that I knew is, is going to come up somewhere in some conversation and I just wanted to be able to confidently say, well, those organisations that are contracted to, do, you know, I can do that now. So that's great. Okay. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. OK, uh, Councillor Donna Krishan. You have to bear with me, Chair, because I've got a severe shoulder injury and things are taking a little bit longer than normal. No problem. We'll take as much time as you need. Right. Um, yeah. Can I just have, ask for clarification? And I also have a question as well. At the beginning of Anne's verbal report, um, she mentioned there were five um, taken, uh, five um, sort of investigation uh, files taken for from adult services and five from children's services. Can I ask, were these actually um, random files? Um, well, clarification if that was the case. And if these were random files that were selected by um, the, by themselves, or, and also um, when carers and foster carers and families were sort of questioned of over um, the, uh, what they've had um, were all this was this all done in com uh, confidential? Yeah, and she was yes. nodding her head as yes. I was asking the questions. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, a month be a month before we come in, um, Dave gets my my letter saying we're coming in, and we have a meeting, and um, we send through all our tools, and then. Um, usually about a, about a week, two weeks before we come in, we get sent all the cases that adults and children are working with within our remit. Now, we don't have any names. We just have the the, the case number and obviously um, ethnicity and what a couple of areas, but we don't know any of the cases. I randomly select cases 
and then send them back a, a day or two. But that's only of the five, and that's only four, um, so that the local authority can arrange for us to speak with people. But we know if any work's been done on those cases because when we now we, we virtually go in, um, we, we can follow the audit trail. All the other cases that we look at, we only we randomly do them and the local authority are not aware of those until after we've done them. So, um, you know, they, 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 they are a, a, a random selection. And, and, and what we say to the local authority is we don't want you, you know, we want the cases as they are as if we were coming in on that day. Everything is done confidential, you know, confident. And, you know, we make the carers, foster carers, young people aware. Obviously, if there was any issues that were safeguarding, we'd have to report them back. And we say our little spiel at the beginning. But no, and when we do the report, that's why you don't see anything in there you know, about people, you know, we don't mention any names or anything. And if there is something that could identify a young person or, or a particular adult, we try to take that, that out as well. Okay, thank you, Anna. Yeah. Anna. Sorry, I was thinking more along the carers, um, ensuring that they were getting oh. the support that they needed and they yeah. could feel that they could speak to you, um, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can make it very clear? You know, we are, we are there as an independent agency, you know, our aim is for improvement. And if there was anything that they said to us, you know, I would ask permission of them, take it back to the relevant assistant director because they mm -hmm. need to know about it. It's exactly the same when people contact us outside of the inspections, you know, we, we may get some concerns in about Caffili. And, you know, I either speak to the people or, or read what they've sent in. Um, and make them aware that only with their permission would I then take it back, you know, to to one of the assistant directors or the director. But we do everything, you know, where we can, so it's confident, you know, it, within confidence. And we do encourage people to, to, to make us aware, you know, of their concerns, because that's the only way that the authority, <laughs> will you know, will learn. And, and, and it's exactly the same with the local authorities complaints process, you know, within Caffili, it's seen as, as a learning process, you know, so, you know, we can do it that way. Sometimes some people, you know, it's very difficult, their circumstances, and no matter what we, we, we try to do or advise, it, it, it doesn't work out the way they'd like it, you know, especially, you know, when you're speaking to families, perhaps who have had children removed, or you're speaking to young people in care, who want to be home, but they can't be. But, you know, we all come from dominantly a social work background, so we were able to to have those conversations with people. OK, thank you. Thank you both. Councillor Leonard. Thank you. Um, just a query, really, as I couldn't see it in the report anyway. Um, are you happy with the way that Caffili is um, dealing with people on um, Zoom and Teams from a safeguarding point of view, really, because it's obviously it's very different to seeing people in person and actually being there and seeing individuals. Um, for us in the inspection, I mean, we could only give people's perspective and quite a number of people, including older adults, really appreciated being contacted through Teams or Zoom. Um, young people, like you know, they loved being contacted through WhatsApp. <laughs> the independent reviewing officers spoke to us about how young people were attending their reviews more because they felt more at ease with it being perhaps undertaken within their home and and using a zoom but on the other side you know staff raised their concerns about you know when they did have to do some interviews you know they didn't know sometimes who was in 
the room perhaps with the young people but I think that's the world that we live in and that's why you know with, yeah. within both services those most vulnerable who they classed in their red group they you know they were seen face to face or doorsteps or in gardens or within hubs and I think this is an area that going on in what we call in you know a lot of the recovery period is something that we got to look at is 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 you know is this how confidential how safe can people be because you only see what people want you to see don't they um yeah it's difficult sometimes to gauge reaction but you know for us we were very confident that those people who were most vulnerable were being seen you know face to face as much Good. as they could, or in hubs or in 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 you know centers but it is something that i know both yeah. social workers and i know both directors and assistant directors have have spoken about because also you've got staff as well that yeah. you know it's, it's it's a different way of working so there is a there is a, a full awareness of that Okay, thank you very much. You. And and just to come in on that before I fetch Gareth in, I can see you waiting there patiently, Gareth. Uh, and you mentioned that this is risk led, yeah? yeah. So you said those in the red category, yeah. uh, we are appropriately prioritizing for face to face where appropriate. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay, thanks. Gareth? Yeah, thankfully, Anne, Anne covered it off really, but, but just to reassure members that, that every case had a RAG rating, so red, amber, green. Those RAG ratings were regularly reviewed, uh, depending on new information that may be coming in. For all safeguarding referrals, when they were first arriving, we were, in, in the majority of cases, doing the physical visits to check on circumstances and, and, and to, to see families directly. And we were only using Teams. We didn't use Zoom. Let, let me be very clear about that. We only used Teams um, for, for longer term monitoring and keeping in touch with families, really, where, where we felt it was safe to do so. Yep. Okay. Is that okay, uh, Councillor? That's yeah. lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Is there any further questions for Anne or the team? No. No. Oh. I think you've got off lightly there, Anne. Personally speaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So if I can sort of pull this together, and please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Anne. What we're saying is, overall, this is an extremely positive report. You've looked at both children's services, you've both and adult services. There's a number of significant strengths there that you've identified within this report. There are a number of, I wouldn't say areas of concern, but areas of learning and improvement. And as you mentioned, I think in the beginning, and uh, uh, Dave has not paid me to say this, <laughs> But what we are as a social services department is a learning department and <clears throat> we love to learn, as they say, and we learn sometimes uh, through the areas that are identified to us. OK, so if there's no further questions, I'd like to thank you, Anne, for the time you've taken with the report, you and your team and for the work that you've done. I'd also like it put on the record, if I could, as this is my last meeting, my heartfelt thanks to Gareth, his team, to Joe and her team, and to Dave Street, and also to all you as members who have supported me over the last eight years of me actually being uh, chair of Social Services Scrutiny Committee. Uh, if there's no further individuals that would like to speak. Oh, go ahead. Oh. OK, it's me, is it uh, done? Yes, it is. What I would like to say is that uh, I've been on this scrutiny for a long, long time now, and you have been absolutely brilliant chair, fair and very knowledgeable on all the issues. And I mm -hmm. feel sorry that you are going to leave us now because I've been on loads of committees in my life and I am not a better chair than you. And thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Cyril. It has been a privilege knowing you uh, over these years and you have contributed well to this committee and I should hope you will continue to do so for a long time. Thank you very Lynn, much. Lynn, can I come in? Of course you can. Of course you As can. You were Go on. sidekick. <laughs> I'd like to polish the guns for you. I'd like to say thank you for all you've done. As a, as a member of the opposition, I'm going to miss him. <laughs> <laughs> All the best. Rem rem remember, in social services scrutiny, there is no opposition. We are one committee. And this is a little message before I fetch anybody else in. For all members and whomever takes over from me, as a little reminder, we, this is a non-partisan role and a chair that I sit in. And we ensure that we give constructive criticism and critique where need be in a non-political way. And I would be extremely disappointed to think if politics were brought into this when I've gone. Because we are here to do a job and we work hand in hand and we have a very good track record in social services scrutiny of doing so and keeping the political shenanigans, for want of a better word, in the main chamber where they belong. Thank you very much. OK, I'm going to fetch in. That. I second that, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to fetch in Councillor Vincent James and then Dave Street. Vince. Thank you, Lyndon. Uh, I, Lyndon, I, I know you said you don't want any more of this, but I'm afraid I think you've got more to come. I, I just I um, I wanted you at the at the council meeting uh, you expressed uh, your gratitude and, and your respect for the social services team and, and uh, management team and, and Dave Street for the, uh, and saying that we uh, have probably one of the best management teams in, in social services in Wales. And I wholeheartedly agree with that and, and uh, recognise, you know, we have, we've got a team that would be extremely hard to beat. Uh, but I want to reverse that compliment on to you and actually just say in the, in the time that I have served on this social services committee. Um, I have got a cons considerable ad admiration for you and respecting under your stewardship, you've been a marvellous chair of, of, the, of this committee. And uh, in, my, in my time working with you it, within social care, uh, it, it, it has been the same. So I, I'm really gonna miss you in, in Caffili and I wish you the very best for the future. Thank you very much, uh, Vince. And uh, you'll notice I actually remembered to pronounce your name correctly <laughs> and I'll call you James <laughs> as I've done because it shows on my screen. Thank you very much, Vince. OK, uh, and last but not least, uh, Dave Street, Director of Social Services. Just from a, an officer's perspective, really, to thank you um, for all you've done for social services over the years. You're right, eight, eight years is a long period of time. I think over that eight years, I've probably been in most of those meetings with you. Um, and there's been some interesting times and it's not always been plain sailing. Um, and, you know, there's times as officers, you don't enjoy the scrutiny um, that you, you experience. But that scrutiny has always been for the right reasons and it's always been about the services that we provide. So thank you. It's made a big difference to the way that we work. We've never had to come into a scrutiny committee worrying about the politics. Um, we've always been able to concentrate on a job in hand, and that's because of the, the way you've led the committee uh, and long may it continue. So from an office perspective, thank you. We wish you well for the future and your new ventures. Uh, and take in uh, Councillor Whittle's comment to council, if you do come back, please don't bring any of that vodka with you. Um, <laughs> it didn't sound good at all, but thank you for all you've done for us. It really is appreciated. Uh, thank you, Dave, and, and, and as Vince, uh, mentioned. I, I really do believe I've worked in several different social services departments over the years and I do believe we have one of the best if not the best uh, social services management teams I've ever come across and long may it continue in, in my opinion even for all our disagreements from time to time. Long may it continue. Okay if there's nothing further than members. Then can I just say something? By all means Donna. I'd just like to pass on my thanks to yourself for your mentorship uh, since I was elected in the last election for um, Kifili County Borough Council and for all the help that you've given me during this period. Uh, it's really appreciated. Total shock that you were going, 
I'm absolutely delighted for you, but you will be missed. Thank you very much, Donna. It, it's much appreciated, all the comments from everybody. And it would be very remiss of me not to mention Kath and her team and everybody that keeps all this going in the background, because without them, we would be lost as councillors. So I thank you to all those staff members that work incredibly hard, keeping everything going for us, especially through these difficult times. And on that note, oh, Councillor Leonard. <laughs> Oh, sorry, left it too late. I, I just quickly wanted to say this is the first committee I was on since becoming a councillor and I've always looked forward to your meetings and I think that you chair them very well and I'd just like to wish you all the best and so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And if I do come back, Dave, you'll no doubt have a bottle of vodka on your, on, on your desk. We just want to show Christina though. <laughs> okay then, on that note, thank you members. Have a good evening and look after yourselves. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Bye.